Hi everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez. This is the Weekly Report, a look at news about programs and services provided by the departments of the City of Kansas City, Missouri. The city has just launched its first ever 311 service request mobile app. This app provides an easy way for residents to request a city service and to track its progress. The city created the app at no cost to taxpayers through an existing contract. The KCMO 311 service request app can be downloaded for free in Apple's App Store and in Google's Play Store. The city has released its 2013 Sustainability in Kansas City report. This report highlights the city's progress as it aims to promote economic vitality, environmental quality, and social equity in its green programs. The report features the city's recent green improvements in energy savings, water and waste management, land use, and outreach. Read the report online by visiting kcmo.org slash kcgreen and clicking on Sustainability in Kansas City. And speaking of sustainable progress, the city has partnered with the Clinton Climate Initiative and the Metropolitan Energy Center to launch a new energy efficiency loan program. This encourages area employers to view home energy efficiency upgrades as an employee benefit. The city is providing $400,000 to a few local employers to fund this Home Energy Affordability Loan Pilot Program. This funding will provide participating employees with personalized home energy audits, which show their potential improvements and their estimated annual savings. For more information about this pilot program or to find out how your business can get involved, contact the Metropolitan Energy Center at 816-531-7283. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi, I'm Floyd Peoples. I'm the fire marshal for the Kansas City Fire Department. I'm here today to talk to you about space heaters and the safe use in your home. Two kinds of space heaters. There's the kind that burn fuel and then there's electric. Well, let's talk first about what the number one criteria is for keeping space heaters safe. Keep the clutter away from the space heater. Always give them at least three feet of space around any kind of space heater so you don't catch something on fire. The number two most important thing to remember about any space heater is to make sure that it was tested by an approved laboratory. It has such features like a uh, tip over switch so if it falls over it turns itself off. Inspect that space heater to make sure that all of the controls are operating and that the cord is not frayed or damaged in any way. Now, if you're going to use a space heater that burns fuel, make sure you fuel it up outside. Never refuel it if it's hot. And remember, store that fuel away from that space heater while you're using it. Have a safe and happy holiday season. The Kansas City Police held an award ceremony recently where officers and citizens alike were noted for their outstanding performance and heroic acts. 25 individuals in the Building Operations Unit received honors. Two of the awards went to individuals that happened into a hit and run accident. In May, 23 year old Kate Squire's car broke down on a narrow stretch of highway. Standing by her vehicle, she was struck by a van and the driver fled the scene, leaving her for dead. Cassidy Kastner stopped and pulled her out of the lane of traffic to prevent her from being hit again. Soon Robert Hill joined Kastner and the two applied first aid and stayed with her until emergency services arrived. Medical staff attributed their acts most likely to saving her life. At the ceremony, the two Good Samaritans and Kate Squires met for the first time since the incident. We spoke with Robert Hill about that eventful night last May. When I drove by the accident scene, um, there's always a momentary in, a question in your mind. What, not only can I stop or should I stop, just because of the traffic that's flowing and the, some, some inherent danger there. But in this circumstance, I knew that help was needed. I was there at that moment and so I realized I needed to stop and render any assistance that I could. You know, it was interesting in terms of the, the actions in this circumstance. Uh, the first person who stopped realized that because of the dangerous stretch of road we were on, she needed to just try and focus on preventing other traffic from hitting because the disabled car had no lights on. Um, and I was there 
to help the, the person who was uh, injured. And so I focused on applying a tourniquet and doing other things like that. So it was a team effort, it really was. It was awesome to see her tonight. Um, there was some great worry that the severity of her injuries might have been life-threatening. So to know that something that you did might have impacted and enabled her to be here physically tonight with a big smile on her face, awesome. The question in my mind of not getting involved, I, that really didn't pop up. I just, maybe it was just the circumstance. I saw someone in need, I saw another car had stopped, and help could be, uh, I could help, so I stopped and helped. KCPD was honored to have the opportunity to recognize these citizens who saw a need and at risk to their own safety, chose to get involved. I'm Officer Shelley Gaddis. Have a safe week. Well, good morning, everybody. And uh, I guess my first welcome is welcome to winter. Uh, it was about, uh, about a year ago that uh, we opened up the interchange down at uh, Tiffany Springs Parkway here at 169 Highway. And, so here we are a year later, and I think it's, uh, I was talking to Ron over there, I think it's about one degree warmer than it was last year. Uh, or maybe one degree cooler, I'm not sure. But anyway, it was a chilly morning uh, in the fall of uh, last year when we opened up the other interchange. So we're here today for a, a great occasion. Uh, this is the, uh, the interchange of, of a state route and a, and a city boulevard parkway route. Um, and we've got a great partnership that's made this happen through a collaborative effort. And we're one is, you know, it wasn't that long ago that we were throwing our quarters uh, at the uh, Broadway Bridge. Uh, driving up here, uh, there was no 152 interchange, or certainly uh, we didn't have the interchanges at um, 96 or 108. A little later they put in uh, signals because we had a number of accidents as people were trying to turn on 169 from 96 to 108. And it's so nice now to be able to drive uh, past the Broadway Bridge, no toll, uh, drive up here, uh, be able to get off at 152, 96, Tiffany Springs, uh, Shoal Creek, 108, and drive all the way to Smithville before you hit a stoplight. Good morning, everyone. Um, this is an awesome day. We started this concept. They had public meetings on this project in the 90s talked about having an interchange here. We've seen, as Ed said, we've seen 169 go from a two-lane road to a four-lane road to 152, and I have to admit my age, and I worked at MoDOT in my beginning career, and I have to say, I've probably worked on all of Highway 152. I worked on the plans to four-lane 169. I saw the layouts before of the 96 interchange before we made them roundabouts. So it's a great to see these things built. It was a great partnership. I want to thank our industry council members as well as our PIAC, um, citywide PIAC dollars that helped provide the local match for this project. The sub-allocated federal funds that you know, pushed this thing over the edge to get built and our great partnership with MoDOT to quickly advance the design and get these things under construction and the providing of the construction and partner um, project. You know, last I just like to thank the uh the commuters and the citizens of this area for putting up with the inconvenience of the of the construction over the last two years. We're very pleased with the way it uh, turned out and that we were able to provide the project uh, in a safe and efficient manner. So thank you very much. I want to thank all of you for coming out today, uh, friends, neighbors, and other brave souls. This is not the uh, most ideal climatic conditions to be celebrating. But I do want to thank Kent, the City of Kansas City, MoDOT's district office, and particularly I'd like to thank the Northland Chamber and the Planning Development Committee for all of the work they put in in uh, bringing these projects to the forefront and helping coordinate them. And uh, Sheila, we all appreciate what your group has done. Uh, in today's world, it takes partnerships to get things done, and with uh, federal government money, MoDOT's great uh, management, uh, City of Kansas City money, uh, City Council, Public Works, it, uh, everybody uh, in parks, everybody to uh, make this thing happen. Uh, it, things do get uh, done, and it's, it's great. This is wonderful. Second of all is uh, this is another great, uh, significant artery into uh, the heart of the Northland. And uh, we've been talking a lot about uh, the development up here and 
the Twin Creeks re region uh, particularly, and this is a uh, another artery we everybody passed, 96th Street as we came in. Uh, these are two great auguries into that area that will help with development. There will be another 70 to 100,000 people here uh, in the next decade or so. So it's an exciting time and uh, congratulations, uh, congratulations to everybody. This is wonderful. Thanks. The theme that I chose this year for the Northland Chamber was Trails to Success. And let me tell you, this is one heck of a trail. Uh, not only the transportation for vehicles, but the great pathways for uh, pedestrian for joggers, for hikers, for bicycles, everything. It's a, just a wonderful thing to happen. And to see this as a gateway to the First and Second Creek or Twin Creeks development along with 96th Street really will make this area take off. Two, three. Hey, The city's airport terminal advisory group will host a public hearing on Tuesday, December 17th at 7.30 a.m. It is at City Hall in the City Council Chambers on the 26th floor. This advisory group is requesting input on what questions the public wants to ask of airline representatives who will speak to this same group in January. Individuals unable to attend the hearing may also email their written testimony to KCI Terminal Advisory Group at kcmo.org. The advisory group comprises community members appointed by Mayor Sly James. They have been meeting bi-weekly since July to study airport operations and the potential impact of any change to the airport. They will make a recommendation in April 2014 to the Mayor and the City Council regarding the future of KCI Airport. The City Council must approve any new plans to KCI and the public must vote on any change that requires issuing bonds to finance a project. In observance of the Christmas and New Year's holidays, city offices and the 311 call center will be closed on Wednesday, December 25th and on Wednesday, January 1st. Curbside trash and recycling collection will be delayed one day each of those weeks for some residents. In addition, the week following Christmas is a no tag period for trash collection in the city. During this period, residents may set out up to 15 bags or 500 pounds of trash without getting tags. For more information about this or any of today's stories, please log on to kcmo.org. Just scroll down to the bottom right-hand corner and click on the weekly report. That does it for this edition of the weekly report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.